I recently dove down a YouTube rabbit hole while researching other video topics, and found myself in the intriguing content sphere of stealth aircraft. Of all the designs and crazy concepts I saw, one aircraft that really caught my eye was this dark triangle that looked so futuristic and sleek that it almost looked fake. This Dorito of Death inspired me to create today's video about the infamous F-117 Nighthawk. The F-117 Nighthawk, America's first stealth aircraft with a somewhat frightening appearance, is an example of a weapon system created to work within the constraints of an amazing new technology. Few people were unaware of the Nighthawk's revolutionary nature when it first entered service in 1983, because it was kept a secret from the public for five years. Curiously, it was a Russian researcher named Pyotr Ufimsov who originally developed the idea that an object's visibility on radar depended not only on its size, but also the angle at which radar waves rebounded off its edges. Ufimsov developed a method for calculating an object's radar cross-section to ascertain how discernible it is on radar. As a result of Ufimsov's research receiving more attention in the United States than in Russia, Lockheed Martin started working on the Have Blue project in the late 1970s to create a jet with the smallest feasible radar cross-section. Using flat surfaces that deflected radar waves away from the transmitter was crucial. The angular aircraft was unlike anything else on display when Lockheed unveiled the first two prototypes in 1977 or since. Curved surfaces are a feature of later stealth designs like the B-2 Spirit and the F-35. The F-117 was created nevertheless before there were sophisticated computers with the computing power to generate such curving surfaces. Consequently, the F-117 is the only stealth aircraft with a two-dimensional faceted design. Due to the restrictions this imposed, the design was aerodynamically unstable, and to compensate and maintain the aircraft in a flyable state, advanced battle computers in conjunction with quadruple redundant fly-by-wire controls were used. Both of the Have Blue prototypes, which were known as Wobbly Goblins, crashed while being tested. Yet, the Air Force was inspired by their efficiency and ability to avoid radar detection, and given the go-ahead to construct a production aircraft with the designation F-117. The public has long believed that the top-secret stealth aircraft was known as the F-19, because of the anachronism of using a model number greater than 100. Because of this, you may get toys, video games, and model kits for the F-19s from the 1980s. In 1981, the first F-117A rolled off the assembly lines at a planned cost of $111 million each. 64 aircraft in total, including five YF-117 prototypes, were manufactured through 1990. According to reports, the production plane handled more forgivingly than its predecessors. The Nighthawk had other design elements that are now commonplace in stealth aircraft, such as radar-absorbent iron ball paint, that was magnetically charged to lessen the reflection of electromagnetic waves. Slit-shaped exhaust nozzles on the F-117's F-404 turbofan engines reduced the exhaust's infrared signature, its two armaments were stowed in an internal bomb bay, and communication antennas may be retracted to lessen its radar signature. Because early radars may be easily spotted, the Nighthawk did not have any. The F-117 was painted black and only used during the night, because it was obvious that it was not invisible to the eye. The F-117 was solely a ground assault jet, despite the F designation for fighter. It lacked the capacity to engage other aircraft in aerial combat. It was a bit slower than the B-52 bomber at its top speed of 623 miles per hour. Because of its 1,070 mile range, it was dependent on aerial refueling, which was not always simple to arrange for a stealth aircraft at night. Only two bombs could be carried by the Nighthawk due to its internal weapon base but they were typically huge, precise-guided, 2,000-pound laser-guided bombs to make up for it. Moreover, it could carry GPS-guided JDAM bombs and the BLU-109 Bunker Buster. The F-117 used a thermal imager for targeting instead of its own radar, and GPS and inertial navigation systems for positioning. With these constraints, the Nighthawk was given a very particular task, to sneak into the heart of the enemy's air defenses and destroy vital targets. Later on, Lockheed did make an effort to market more adaptable F-117 models that could operate from carriers and had more potent F-414 engines and twice as much weaponry, including the capability to fire long-range AIM-120 air-to-air missiles. Unfortunately, the Royal Air Force and the American Navy both rejected the type. The 4,450th Tactical Fighter Squadron, which began operating the Black Hawk in large numbers in 1983, was headquartered at Tonopah Air Base. The unit nominally operated A-7 Corsair attack aircraft out of Nellis Air Force Base in order to conceal the Nighthawk. 
The F-117 was almost sent to Lebanon to attack the PLO shortly after it was put into service as revenge for the 1983 Beirut barracks bombing that claimed the lives of 220 Marines. Only 45 minutes before flight, Defense Secretary Weinberg called off the raid. In 1988, the Pentagon finally made grainy images of the Nighthawk public. When the United States overthrew Director Manuel Noriega in Operation Just Cause a year later, the jet finally saw action over Panama. To confuse and stun Noriega's elite troops while reducing the real death toll, the F-117s were instructed to drop delayed fuse bombs 50 meters away from the Rio Hato barracks. The guard were mobilized before the F-117s arrived, and the Nighthawk pilots were unsure of which targets to bomb. Therefore, the mission didn't entirely go as planned. In the end, the strike definitely had a role in the uncertainty and disarray that the Panamanian Defense Force experienced, though perhaps not in the way that was planned. The Nighthawk's potential was eventually realized during the Gulf War in 1991. The 415th and 416th Tactical Fighter Squadrons were stationed in Saudi Arabia when they nearly started the war on January 17, 1991, when they attacked targets in Baghdad. The Apache helicopters that were in front of them destroyed any Iraqi low-bandwidth radars that may have forewarned of their approach before the F-117s snuck into the fortified airspace of the Iraqi capital. The air defense hub for Baghdad was destroyed by Major Feast Nighthawk. Anti-aircraft guns started to light up the sky at that point. But the remaining F-117s continued to launch 49 laser-guided bombs at radars, air defense headquarters, and phone centers. F-117s conducted 1,280 flights and hit 1,600 targets during the conflict, including bridges, biological and chemical weapon installations, parked Iraqi bombers, communication nodes, command bunkers, and ammo storage areas. Pilots claimed that because radar-guided missiles were relatively safe, they felt secure taking their time to carefully aim at their targets in order to reduce collateral damage. For instance, in one incident, a pilot reported delaying the release of weapons to permit a vehicle carrying civilians to cross a bridge. Over 30% of Baghdad's attacks were carried out by F-117s, which also made a significant contribution to reducing air defenses so that conventional aircraft could fly over Baghdad with more safety. Nonetheless, a report issued by the Government Accountability Office following the battle noted that the type only successfully hit 60% of its designated targets with weapons. This was partially due to the unfavorable weather that prevailed above Baghdad, which made it challenging to recognize targets on the ground with accuracy. Following the Gulf War, the F-117 force was transferred to the 49th Fighter Wing at Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico. During the 1999 Kosovo War, the stealth fighters returned to combat, operating from bases in Aviano, Italy and Spangdalem, Germany. As part of the NATO-led campaign to persuade the Republic of Yugoslavia, formerly Serbia, to stop repressing the ethnic Albanian minority in Kosovo. On the first day of hostilities, an F-117 delivered specialized BLU-114B graphite soft bombs that rendered 70% of the Yugoslavian electrical grid inoperable. The effectiveness of the graphite bomb is still up for question. The electricity grid was operational again in 24 hours until it collapsed once more. A controversial Nighthawk attack later destroyed a Serbian media center, killing 16 civilians. During the Kosovo campaign, the Yugoslavian Air Force deployed powerful MiG-29 fighters to engage NATO aircraft. The MiG-29s could not see the Nighthawks, but the Nighthawks could see the MiG-29s. In one instance, air-to-air -air missiles launched by escorting F-16s and neighboring MiG-29s collided with an F-117 on a strike mission as it was caught in the crossfire. The F-16's assistance allowed the Nighthawk to avoid harm, nevertheless. The downing of a Nighthawk by a local variant of the Russian S-125 Neva, NATO codename SA-3, radar-guided missile, is of course the most notable achievement of the Nighthawk in the battle. Yugoslav Colonel Zoltan Dani, commander of the missile battery, used cunning to accomplish this. He deployed his missile launchers frequently and activated his radar only briefly, employing more sophisticated strategies than those used by Iraqi missile batteries, both to escape air defense suppression attacks and to place them in the NATO aircraft's expected approach vector. NATO frequently used EA-6 Prowler jamming planes to reduce his radar's effectiveness, although they weren't always available to accompany every sortie. Although low-bandwidth radars could see the stealth jets more easily, they were too inaccurate to lock onto a missile. According to Colonel Danny, instead, he instructed the low-bandwidth radar to alert the high-bandwidth targeting radar to the precise location of the 117, which became momentarily visible to the latter as it flew close to and opened its bomb bays towards the missile site. A missile from the two that were fired landed on Lt. Col. Dale Zelko's Nighthawk. In a dramatic rescue mission, Zelko ejected and was found, 
and his Nighthawk fell to the ground with little damage, although some of it was hidden away to be examined in Russia and China. You can still see the remnants of it today at the Museum of Aviation in Belgrade. Zelko and his adversary Zoltan, on the other hand, have subsequently gotten along and are even featured in their own documentary series. As part of Operation Enduring Freedom, F-117s also took part in attacks in Afghanistan, and they later returned to Iraq as part of the 2003 American invasion. A day before military operations began, on March 18, 2003, Nighthawks launched in an effort to assassinate Saddam Hussein in Dora Farms. After 25 years of active service, the Nighthawk was formally retired in an event in August 2008. But why? Because the F-22 Raptor, a stealth jet that is actually a fighter and can also carry weapons for ground attack, entered service. The Nighthawk's radar cross-section is typically listed as .001 cubic meters, which is exceptional compared to a normal fighter jets of 5 to 10 cubic meters. Yet, the Raptor's cross-section at .0001 meters squared is thought to be 10 times better. Minimizing the cross-section is essential given the ongoing advancements made to both low and high bandwidth radars to combat stealth jets. The Raptor can carry both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground weapons, is roughly three times faster than the F-117, and is incredibly maneuverable because of its vector thrust engines. Moreover, the Raptor possesses an active electronically scanned array, AESA, radar that may be utilized while the aircraft is still largely undetectable. The Raptor is also less expensive to run than the Nighthawk, which needed more extensive radar-absorbing paintwork. In order to raise funds for the purchase of additional Raptors, of which only about 120 are in active units, the F-117 was thus retired three years early. Other stealth aircraft in service include the F-35, a multi-role fighter that is less expensive and less effective than the Raptor, but has better datalink and electronic warfare capabilities. There are two aircraft, the B-2 Spirit and the new B-21 Raider, for ground assault, carrying greater bomb loads. The F-117s were initially stored and climate control to hangars so they could be reactivated if necessary. Even a handful were seen in 2014 conducting test flights. Congress did, however, finally approve the complete retirement of the Nighthawk in April of 2008. The F-117 provided the American military with a rare capacity to penetrate past enemy air defenses and destroy high-value targets with its precision guided bombs for many years. The first-generation stealth technology of the Nighthawk had some limitations but decades of development have increased the potential of stealth technology. The Nighthawk nevertheless paved the way for the more powerful aircraft that will control the skies of the future and was the initial step in a dramatic breakthrough in modern aerial warfare. What are your thoughts on the F-117 Nighthawk? Do you think it was effective? Let me know in the comments below. And if you are new here, maybe consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. On screen now, you will find my aviation playlist about other wacky and out there planes and ideas or you can check out this random video from my channel. As always, I hope to see you in the next one.